Moro Moro and welcome back to Culinary Roleplaying and into session 2 of solo one-shots using 5th edition rule system and probably into the finale of Gordon's adventure. Last time we had an interesting start for Gordon. Gordon started his adventure from Far Landing. He was hired by the local town elders from Far Landing to hunt down this mysterious beast. It was introduced as a wolf for Gordon. And this wolf had been attacking townspeople within the far forest. Gordon started his journey by walking down the road. He came across old acquaintances of his and old acquaintances of Far Landing. Just a pair of good-for-nothings that tried to shake Gordon down but ended up having taken arrow in the knee. But it was enough of a distraction for Gordon that this corrupted beast that looked like a wolf, but Gordon could definitely see it was not a wolf, got a better of him for a moment and tried to make a surprise attack. Gordon was able to get out of the way of this toothy maw that came from the forest. And when facing the beast, this corrupted creature, Gordon could see this mysterious intelligence behind its eyes when it started to grin and run off deeper into the forest. Gordon had to run after it and after few desperate efforts we were able to keep the pace with the creature but we were led into this cave. And now at the mouth of this dark cave we continue our journey and towards the final confrontation of Gordon against the corrupted beast. And I remember that we lit up another torch so we can see something while we thread deeper into the cave. I don't know if there's much else that we can try to do. I could try to take a short rest for Gordon and try to heal up because now we are at the mouth of the cave. So I think Gordon believes that Beast won't be able to leave from the cave without Gordon seeing it leaving. So I would say it's quite alright for us to take a short rest, one hour, heal up our wounds, but also the creature and whatever is inside that cave will have more time to prepare. But it's better to thread carefully from this moment forward. Okay, before we go, and this might be the Gordon's last journey, so I think it's wise for us to take a moment and talk about you joining the Culinary Roleplaying Guild by pushing the join button. And definitely, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that also from down below. And then we will roll the dice and heal. Two hit points. Actually, it's plus constitution, so four. We are at full health, full capacity, which is really good. So I thought that we can do this mount cave crawl, dungeon crawl as an like a point crawl way. So let's just create the first scene that we are, we are gonna go into using still the good old plot unfolding machine oracle. Let's first roll the expectation. What we can expect from this scene when Gordon will plunge into the darkness with only the torch by his side. Seven. It happens as expected. So, because we don't know what what there is, I think we could roll a circumstance which will give us an inkling of what we can expect first. Because now this is basically hunter versus hunter and it's gonna be definitely a competition who sees each other first. But we don't know if the, the beast might have some additional help or what kind of place this cave even is. So let's just start with rolling a circumstance. 14. Tactical devices may be utilized. Okay, this definitely means the creature. So I would say this corrupted beast is way more intelligent than we first realized. I think there is some kind of reason. There is some kind of reason why this creature has been attacking these local townsfolk. Even with the most vile creatures, they always have a, some kind of reason. So we can roll reason next. 
and that can also further inform us what these tactical devices might be that this creature is using. An action is 10 and an emotive is 1. Action 9. Secure 3. Glory or reputation? I got an idea. Yeah. I know what happens. Gordon carefully approaches the mouth of the cave. He takes a deep breath. <sighs> okay. Here goes nothing, I guess. He has readied his short sword. He has his torch on the other hand. And he carefully travels deeper into the cave. The cave continues a bit. It starts to slope down a little bit. So basically Gordon is going underground and there are, it has some curves in it. And Gordon continues to walk slowly, carefully about maybe a few minutes. Let's say two minutes. It's not that long of a walk, maybe like 50 meters. But nonetheless, because Gordon is definitely taking his time and he's basically analyzing every every curve and like trying to be as precise as possible. It takes some extra time. And we will definitely make a narrative perception check to see how this will go. And now, just because this is directly against this creature's abilities, I will use this creature's stealth, which is plus four and add 10 to that, so it's 14, and that will be our DC for this check. So the DC will be 14. Do I want to add some additional modifiers just because it's really dark? We have a torch. <sighs> let's, let's just use the DC of 14 for now. And we are luckily proficient with perception, so that means we get plus 5 to our roll. Again, we are using negative and positive dice just like last time, and here we go. Ooh, that's interesting. So positive die is 19. We almost got a crit. Well, there is no, there are no crits in skill checks, but still. Positive dice is 19, so that's 24, more than enough. The negative dice is seven, plus five is 13, which is not enough, so that means yes, but interesting i want to see the extra challenge so we won't be completely surprised but there is still some kind of twist and i think the twist is the aspect tactical devices may be utilized yes i know what it is okay so going forward a bit gordon can see the tunnel opening up into this kind of cavern area this round cavern area and when he gets closer he also starts to see this location is actually built or there is infrastructure. The floor is not like a cave floor anymore. It is a distinct pattern made out of stones. And he can also see the cave walls have been actually built up into this stone temple kind of round structure style. And when he gets in, there seems to be a brazier in the middle of this room. And then he sees by the gods. What Gordon can see is different trophies. Different trophies from the prey that the corrupted beast has been hunting. There are mementos, there are remains, and everything else you can expect from a ferocious hunter that wants to display its conquests. Gordon's breath gets more intense. He starts to rush towards the brazier. And he can see the brazier being metallic. It starts to glow and glimmer from the torchlight. And he suddenly sees these two extra glimmers right behind the brazier. It is the corrupted beast that tries to leap against the Gordon, surprisingly. But Gordon was able to see the beast. So Gordon makes this vault from the ground and going under the beast. Quickly, Gordon is able to drop the torch into the brazier. And it seems to lit up this round room full of different trophies. But also at the same time, you can hear <laughs> a gate comes down, shutting the way out. The corrupted beast grins. Arr. 
Perfect. Now you can't run. Speaks towards Gordon, who still holds his short sword. That was the tactics that we were talking about. I still want to believe there is some kind of advantage in this location for the beast. What is it? Let's roll a challenge for us, because there has there had to be a reason why the wolf wanted Gordon to come into this location. This is its domain. Definitely had something planned for Gordon. So let's see what kind of challenge we can expect. 10. Have sanity, spirit or willpower tested? I know, after giving this talk, still having a, a remembrance of a wolf. The wolf lets out this terrifying, terrifying howl of... <laughs> and now, looking up, Gordon can see that this whole temple is basically... has this metallic roof that basically works this kind of echo chamber. And he can hear the wolf all around him, this massive, massive pressuring voice. Gordon has to put his hands on his ears. It is terrifying and ear piercing. So we have to do some kind of save. Is this a wisdom or constitution save? I rather want to play with the fear more than I want to play with the volume of the sound because it was a challenge against sanity. So that's why let's do a wisdom saving throw. Oh, and let's again use the wolf's DC, which was 11. But now because we are in the echo chamber. Do you want to be even that mean that I will roll it with disadvantage? I will, because this was the trap of the wolf. I will roll with disadvantage. DC 11. Wisdom saving throw. <laughs> well, I wouldn't probably have needed to have that because that's 4 and 3. Oh, do I want to use the final luck point or do I want to save it? I will save it. So we are now scared. We start this encounter with scared condition and we can try to end it with the end of next round and why it's with the end of next round is because with my custom legendary heroes combat rules we have this different encounter system i think gordon is holding his hands and, it, and it's like even his vision is starting to get a little bit blurry but he can see the wolf is ready and it's ready to leap once more and attack gordon and this is where we will roll our initiative. Okay. The creature is the black one. We are the positive dice, of course, because we are the hero. Here we go. We will start. 18 plus 4 is... Right? 4. Dexterity modifier is 4. Yeah. So we have 22. And the, and the beast rolled 10 plus, I think, it has 2 of dexterity. So we will start this round. But we are afraid. That means we can't get closer to the beast. All the attacks are with disadvantage. So I draw a little, little very unspecific map for us. But we can see the chamber in here. Here we have the trophy tables over here. The bracer is in the middle. The clever corrupted beast is almost next to Gordon right now. So Gordon starts. We are afraid. I think Gordon first just takes few steps back out of this creature's reach. He's still holding his short sword and I think he will just again ready an attack action when the creature is trying to get close to him. And that's all he can do at this moment. And that's end of his turn. And at the end of his turn we will again use the legendary hero action and we will again use it to dodge so again gordon is taking like stumbly steps back but then he finds finds his footing takes a deep breath and focuses on taking this beast on whatever happens and now it's the creature's turn creature stares at gordon and says 
to Gordon. Oh, this might be fun after all. <laughs> and takes whoo, whoo, quick steps right next to Gordon and makes this ah, biting attack with its terrifying, corrupting maw. I modified the wolf stat block a little bit. I gave the corrupting base a more soothing attack. So instead of using strength to knock the enemy prone, it will make us poisoned and it will also give us corruption if we fail at save DC. But first we roll for attack. The creature gets plus four with disadvantage because we used a dodge action and our AC is 18 because of agile combat that comes from our class. So. 18 with disadvantage, plus 4 to the roll. Here we go. <sighs> 9 and 4. Really bad roll overall. That's good for us. Oh, and I forgot our ready to attack as well. Well, we can take that right now after this. So the creature jumps closer to Gordon and tries to again make this very uncareful, relentless bite attack and just tries to like bite a piece out of Gordon's chest. But Gordon is not having it. Gordon is able to make this kind of quick taunting swing that will stop the wolf on its track and not go through with the attack. After that, Gordon finds an opening. He like, woof, takes a reverse grip and tries to slash, make this surprising slash attack with the sword sword, but he's still afraid of this beast. So we will have to attack with disadvantage because we are still afraid. <sighs> So our short sword is plus six and d6 plus four against AC of 13 with disadvantage. Here we go. Ooh, that might be enough. No, not quite. No, it is. No, it's <laughs> what a journey. We got 11 and six plus six is 12 and it was 13. So it's just not enough. So Gordon takes this re reverse grip tries to hit the beast right into its neck, but the beast is fast and it, it basically like pushes Gordon back with his torso and making the trajectory of the blade go amiss. And that was the end of first round. And now we can make a wisdom saving throw again against DC 11 to see if we are still afraid. I take the light one, positive one, because that gives us better rolls, right? So we, wisdom save plus three, beat 11. Here we go. 18 plus three. We are no, no, no longer afraid. So Gordon misses with the blade, but then is able to <sighs> staple his breathing. And he just says to the beast, I came here to do a job. And I have never failed any of my jobs. <sighs> and he takes another swing with his sword sword. With the reverse grip going amiss, he then takes his other hand and pushes the sword sword blade, making this kind of piercing attack towards the creature. So now we don't have to roll with disadvantage. Straight roll plus six. Eight plus six is 14. And this time it will be enough to hit the beast. And let's roll d6 plus four piercing damage. Five plus four, it's nine. Nine piercing damage against the creature. And that is a big hit, actually. So the creature has only four points left. So this time, Gordon is able to pierce the wolf with the blade, but it doesn't quite go through. The wolf is, the beast is just able to leap to the side, but still the blade connects with the side of the, of the beast and it cuts this real deep and big cut into this creature. The creature is <laughs> cries with pain. I think Gordon will stay still and that will that is end of his turn. And at the end of his turn, we again have the heroic action. I think we have to play it safe now. I could try to finish this right now, but if we miss and the wolf connects with its attack it can be really devastating if we get poisoned so Gordon knows how this goes even one sidestep can mean the end he's playing safe he got a hit in he 
turns the reverse grip back and is ready to take on the wolf once more. And again use the dutch action for defense. Now it's the creature's turn. It was a smart creature and it had a plan. I think I know what it will do. The creature will take one step to the side and use its action to actually knock the pressure down and actually kill the lights of this room. So the brazier goes dark and it is completely dark in here. Gordon can only hear this in front of him. Let's even try to disengage. I think the creature can see in darkness. I think it will just try to move into other location. It will start to like move around to make it more difficult to Gordon to realize where the wolf actually is. Gordon can still like hear some like steps in different sides and he has like the approximation where the last position the wolf had been but it's really difficult to determine. And now we are at the beginning of the third round. Okay, what will Gordon do? We have torches. Oh, this is difficult. It's our only option to actually just hit the creature. Gordon is not... Gordon is not certain, so he will again hold action, attack action, and he just tries to focus. He just tries to focus, and he's just trying to hear when the creature is trying to attack him, and then intercept that attack when he gets more clear sense where the creature is. Now we are when we are in this interesting situation where basically the next hit against the wolf may kill it, but the wolf has now interesting advantage. Let's make this a narrative perception skill check. That outcome can help us determine what happens when they next time they clash against each other. This will be with per perception. And it's not disadvantage because he because now Gordon is trusting his hearing. Or would this be in disadvantage? I just said that the creature has upper hand. I will take that into account when we roll the narrative dice and even like partial success might be a little bit more punishing just because of the darkness. And, le and let's even pump up the DC. So the creature's stealth was plus four and we were using 14. Let's pump up that to 16 as well. So narrative perception, which was plus 5 for us, I think, and DC is 16. Here we go. Let's see what happens. That is 11 and 3, and the 11 is the negative one. But now, now we can use luck. My final luck point. Our final luck point. We will definitely reroll this. But now is the question. I need to remember the rules for lucky feet. Because can we, when we are rolling with lucky, can we decide, uh, can we decide the number of dice we roll or do we have to roll all of the dice with advantages or disadvantages? So could I just roll the one that failed with using luck? Okay, so luck states that I can roll one extra d20 and then I can determine which dice I will use. So yes, I can actually, I can just take this three and roll it again. Or I could roll an additional dice and then change it. I will just roll the three again. But yeah, that's really powerful. Definitely a good thing to have it. So we will re-roll the positive die. Ah! <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> Oh my god, it was 13, but then it had this little bum in here and it rolled into two. <laughs> so we will use the three, which is not enough. So we get no butt. Okay, I know how this goes. So we won't hit the creature. We will definitely won't hit the creature. So Gordon can hear the creature leaping towards him with its maws open. And Gordon tries to put the sword in the way and does so, protecting himself from the wolf's 
bite, but gets basically pushed to the side. So Gordon right now is on the ground and I even think he takes one point of damage. Okay, Gordon is on the ground. Now we can use our legendary action to make it a movement and we can use the half of the movement to rise up from the ground. No, I used, I used the movement already. I don't know where the torch is because the torch might be somewhere on the ground because it was on the brazier. I think Gordon can see like small, small embers in here where he can also see the torch being one of those embers as well. Like somewhere here. So with the small effort he might be able to lit up the torch again. But that is for the next round which starts now. Okay, so Gordon can't see the wolf. That is really bad thing. We need some light if we want to survive. We are out of luck points. We can't do that same kind of... <laughs> well, <laughs> it didn't help us at all, but still we don't have any luck points either. So we are very exposed right now. Think, think, think. Oh, oh. yeah, I, I think we do this. Gordon uses some movement, uses his action to pick up the torch. Yeah, uses his action to pick up the torch, but that is not enough to light the torch. And it's end of his turn. And now, with legendary action, right after his turn, we use another action to actually light up the torch as well. So he's able to crawl, crawl from the ground, get next to the torch, and even use the, some of the embers from the ground and light up the torch again. And now Gordon can see the creature again grinning, readying his next leap. So Gordon is still kind of exposed. It is the creature's turn and it is intelligent and it is wounded. Oh, what it, it will try to do. It will try to howl again. It will try to make another howl strong enough that Gordon has to drop the torch. So the creature reels back into the corner and, and gathers its breath. And makes another terrifying, terrifying howl. Now stronger than before. Gordon, I would say Gordon is immune to its fear right now but we need to make a constitution saving throw for the sheer force of this howling. Let's use the DC of 11. It will be a constitution saving throw. Constitution is only plus one for us, so that not that good. Here we go. Don't screw me, yes! 14 plus two is 16, more than enough. So the Gordon is able to block the howling with his hands and is able to withstand sheer like the dissonating echo within the chamber and the creature seems very annoyed and he even starts to back down a little bit it now realizes that it has also trapped itself into this room there we go to the fifth round it's gordon's initiative and with the torch in his hand now he returns the short sword into his other hand woof woof now it's my turn. Ah, and he charges towards the beast and makes this leaping, leaping piercing strike against this creature. Piercing attack plus six against 13. 17 plus six. Is that enough actually? It has three hit points. We have plus four modifier, which means it's already enough. So, Gordon charges, takes the jump attack, and, and the creature is trying to reel back and get away, but it's not fast enough. And Gordon pierces the creature's neck. And the creature falls down on the ground. And Gordon is... Taking a few breaths and is exhausted. Oh. And I think at that moment, the corruption is leaving the creature's body. And it turned out to be a wolf. But now, after its demise, the corruption has left the body. So it is so it was some kind of power that could manipulate other beings. 
of taking a hold of their mortal body and dominating it, corrupting the soul and twisting the reality. Gordon leans down to take a look at the wolf. Mm, interesting. I'd better write a report to the guild about this incident. But first, I have to finish the job. And Gordon starts to take count of the different objects, of the trophies. He's removing some stuff from his bag and he's taking all possible mementos of that might be helpful for identifying the people that have been the target of the creature. Gordon also finds a mechanism that releases the door again. Back up. And he also wonders what this temple is. That is for someone else to discover. My job is done here. And after gathering everything, he leaves starts to head back into Far Landing. And that is the end of this one-shot session with Gordon using 5th edition. Ooh, wow! That became a very interesting story indeed. And I think I'm not much of a 5e player myself, but I have to admit, when you're playing alone and you can just you can just improvise everything, you can just improvise the rules, it's, it can be quite fun. And it was fun to test the solo rules. I know it seemed like, oh, you didn't take any damage, but like, we used all the luck points. I abused the dodge action, because especially in low levels, like we saw with the wolf, it's same with you. There you only two or one or two good hits in and you're gone. And that is why it's so difficult to play solo character, because when you are down, there's no there's nobody coming to get you, so that's why it's important that we have those luck points that we can evade those fatal, fatal attacks as much as we can. So we can take only like, like one good hit before the next one will take us completely out. So I would say overall, even with, against one creature, the, the balance was quite all right. And theoretically, we could fight against three creatures but i this was very good this was a very good start i'm very excited what the future of one shots will hold i already have some ideas of different systems that we are going to use i think we are going to use another familiar system from how it plays series the next adventure we are going to go in within the world of dawn cross this was fun. Hopefully it was for you as well. Thank you for watching and if you really enjoyed it, remember to like the video. That's all from me today. Now it's Moro Moro and I hope I see you next time.